regard to market segmentation, let me give you a very concrete example. Uh, one of the companies um, that I started with Thomas Massey, it was actually his technology, it started about sensible devices, then we uh, created sensible technologies, was a revolutionary 3D um, interface into the computer. Basically, it was a robot um, that allowed you to feel things in the computer. It was like a 3D uh, mouse next to it, but I could feel it. As I moved in here, I could feel what I saw, and I could lift it up and down, I could twist it around, I could move it. Extraordinary technology, and I could actually deform what I saw there. So, uh, for the first time, people could they could see things in the computer, they could hear things in the computer, but for the first time they could touch it as well. Extraordinary breakthrough. Um, it allowed all types of things to happen. You could now play games, you could feel things, you could do medical simulations, you could do interact with 3D objects in ways that people couldn't imag have imagined before. Uh, blind people could now use it. There was just, it was a target rich environment of things that we could do and we made a list of all the things we could do. It was extraordinarily long, crazy ideas, um, ideas that were inappropriate, um, but we had to come up with a way to move forward that was aligned with our passions and our values. So what we did is we made a matrix that, that listed at the very top, you know, the top markets that we were going to be involved with. And for instance, one of them was uh, an animator. That was the customer. So in this, it was the, the industry was the entertainment industry. And I apologize for this being too small, but we'll, we'll, we'll put online an example of this, of this matrix because it's going to be very detailed. But while the industry entertainment was relevant, what was much more relevant was who was the end user. Who was the end user? And in this case, the end user was an animator, be it at Pixar, be it Industrial Light and Magic, you know, these, you know, be it at Disney. All these people had a real need to, to move three-dimensional objects around. And we decided not to focus on the 2D, but strictly the 3D. So within that, we had to say, that's the end user. What exactly are they doing? And in three dimensions, what they were doing was, what was the application that they were doing. And the application was they were sculpting, they were painting, and there might be some dynamics. So you've seen 3D movies, so they have to create the sh shapes, they have to sculpt them, they then paint them to be a certain color, and they paint them in three dimensions, um, and then they move them around. And so all of these things were things that were animators were doing in a very non-intuitive way. But as soon as they could have our 3D device, they could do that. And so as we go down to what was they were going to use it for, now we could have the specific benefits that they were going to achieve from this as well. And we, could, we gave a detailed description of the benefits that they would get from this. Then we would say, what does the market look like, market characteristics, then we talk about who are the current players that are out there doing that, so we can see the as-is state, so why we're better, and you can see through this whole matrix that we lay out.